two. Today we are going to check the air filter, see if it needs to be replaced. And while I've got that off, I'll go ahead and clean the mass air, clean the throttle body. Now you can obviously take out the air filter just by popping these and kind of wrestling it open. But it certainly makes the job easier if you unscrew this here. That way this just pops right up. And you want to disconnect the mass airflow sensor. And on the floor, the mass air sensor, at least on the newer models, is an integral part of this. If memory serves me correct, I may be wrong on this, but I was thinking maybe some of the older models, it was a separate piece from the plastic. But it's now molded into here, so there it is. So the air filter just lifts out. And check it. Mine's got a little bit of dirt. It's not really significant. I'm going to go ahead and clean it though just because it is a K&N so it's washable and reusable. I'm also going to clean all of the debris out of the inside of there. First step is to clean this. I'm going to go ahead and use the K&N product. You could probably get away with using Dawn to be honest. Factory, it's defective. <laughs> so I won't be using that. I'm using my patented works every time Dawn dishwashing. I start by soaking the dirty side. And we're gonna flip it over and let gravity help, and we're gonna spray the clean side. Dawn is just simply one of the best degreasers there is, so it may actually work better than the k and product. We'll find out here in a little bit. So this product says to let it soak for 10 minutes and don't let it dry before rinsing. So I'm going to try to do approximately 10 minutes with the Dawn and see where we're at. do the mass air sensor I'm using mass airflow sensor cleaner and I've taken a shop towel and plugged up the back side and it says just basically give it a couple squirts making sure you don't actually physically touch the thing and I'm hoping you can see but it evaporates very quickly And while you've got everything apart to get to the throttle body, it's just another flat screw that loosens up the retaining clip. Remove. So there's the flat screw that you loosen to loosen up the ring. And then you also have this piece here that has this little press down release and pull to remove. And with that, this should slide off. You may have to wiggle it a little bit. And I would look down in there, and if it looks really dirty, I would go ahead and wash it out with some Dawn and let it dry really well. So mine is 
I would say dirty enough that I'm going to go ahead and clean it. It's just got kind of a thin layer of dust, but the more of that you get out, the less of that gets sucked into your engine. Now you can see the inside of my throttle body. It's not super dirty. I'm using that to clean it. Basically, you just kind of spritz it on there a little bit at a time. You really don't want to over soak it and you don't want to constantly spray because it does go down into your engine. I'm using a regular shop rag instead of a paper towel because hopefully it won't leave anything inside of there whereas a paper towel can rip and get sucked into there. And you see already I'm getting some dirt. And that's just the outside of the throttle body. I am planning another video to actually take this off, clean both sides of it, as well as as far down as I can reach. But for now, I'll just be doing it this way. You do have to be careful when you open this that you don't get your finger caught underneath it or something. I've heard horror stories, thankfully it hasn't happened to me. You see I've got quite a bit off of there already. So that's what it's looking like now. So I'll put a screwdriver handle under the bottom there to kind of keep that open so I can get in here. So you see how badly those two screws are grabbing this. If it was paper towel, it would just rip and you'd run the risk of it falling in there. So that's what came out of mine and mine's been cleaned before. <laughs> so it's been about 10 minutes for me to have a rinse. It's kind of a soft flow. Rinsing from the clean side down to push the dirt out. Right in here was the dirtiest part of the filter. But obviously we want to rinse out the whole thing. Just kind of a quick rinse down on the dirty side. See there's some debris that's not come out yet. See whatever's stuck in there is not wanting to come out at all. Now this has to be dried thoroughly before you can oil it. A lot of people just let it sit out. I'm going to actually hit it with the blower and try to speed up the process a little bit. That should speed things up quite a bit and uh, I'll let it dry completely before I oil it. Now that this is clean and dry, I'm going to saturate it with some 303 just on the outside, not on the inside. Uh, this will hopefully keep this looking brand new and keep it flexible, keep it from cracking, that sort of thing. taking baby steps here. You could probably put this on the inside and it probably wouldn't suck it into the intake, but I'll let somebody else try that first. But it's definitely safe for the outside. So I'll let that soak in a little bit and then I'll wipe it down and hopefully it'll look like a brand new piece. While I'm letting that soak in, I'm going to also Put some on the K&N edges. Since this rubber here is what seals the dirty air from getting around, so these edges need to stay as new as possible. 
I'm not spraying the product on because I don't want to get it on the actual air part. I just want it on the rubber part. Now, I wouldn't worry about putting this on a disposable filter. I'm just putting this on here since this is a washable, reusable one and I want to keep this rubber gasket around it from uh, disintegrating. Which that should help this thing last even longer. In other words, I'd rather this part wear out and fail before this does. And I think the 303 will help that, you know, where this will last at least as long as the center part. So that's shined up and protected and ready to go back on the car. So the installation is just the reverse removal. We're going to fit this piece over the throttle body, line that up with the little tab there, tighten that down, reattach the, uh, I don't know if that's the crankcase ventilation or Make it hand tight, and that piece just slips back over. Now, I know the older models are slightly different setup, particularly like I have the drive-by wire instead of the direct linkage. I'm going to go ahead and treat the outside of the box with 303 as well. careful not to get any inside where the mass air sensor would get any on it. Alright, the filter is dry and the oiling process is pretty simple. I'm going to oil it in this fashion so that I can spray it evenly. Um, you want to spray the side that's going to get dirty so the airflow is going this way so I'm going to spray this side. You don't want to spray this side because that can get sucked through easier I guess. Uh, basically they, about three inches from the pleats and just kind of spray down these lines. Try to get kind of a uniform color as best you can. And so then you're going to let it soak 10 to 20 minutes probably and go back and touch up anything. So like I said, basically you want kind of a uniform color. So once you've got a uniform color, I think this is pretty uniform. I, I tend to go a little on the less oil side rather than the more oil side. So like you'll see this side is a much lighter color than the side that's going to catch the dirt. I know when you buy these things they're practically dripping oil, but then when you read the instructions it says don't do that so I don't know why they come that way but anyway that just lays back in there and then we've got our cover piece I'm going to need to probably move this out of the way to get these lined up and it just latches down Tighten down the clamp. And then because the mass air sensor is potentially a wet spot, I would go ahead and put some dielectric tune-up grease on the connector before you reconnect it. I 
it just seals out any moisture. And then make sure you slide the locking tab back in so that that won't come undone. And that's it. Hopefully now this thing will run more efficiently. My gas mileage has been kind of dipping into the 15s even though I'm not even running air conditioning right now. So don't know what's going on. Haven't really had a heavier foot. So like I said, hoping this gets me back up to the 16, 17s.